Okay, so let me start. Okay, so hello everyone. So today I'm going to talk about uh, anima animating an SVG cat uh, with React. And my name is Elizabeth. Um, actually, I'm a senior product designer at Elastic, and Elastic has a lot of products. One of them is Elasticsearch, we have Logstash, so a bunch of them. So I consider myself a designer. Uh, in the past, I tried to be a developer. It didn't go so well just because I'm too lazy. So <laughs> I'm lazy to do code in the proper way, but I really like to do code, but to achieve a design, not to do code just to, for doing it. I have to achieve something. And sometimes I achieve uh, the, co um, the design that I want in a very bad way with a very bad code, but uh, believe me, I can do it. So this is what I'm going to present today. So I'm going to start by saying what is an SVG. So how many of you in the audience actually um, are using like SVGs on a daily basis? Yeah, that's a lot of people, I guess. So then I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about SVG with React and then I'm going to code the cat that is going to be like customizable and with uh, some animations. So this is the definition of an SVG from the Wikipedia. It says that it's an XML based vector image format for two-dimensional graphic and blah, blah, blah. I actually prefer this definition from Ivilo from SidePoint. And this, this says that it, under the uh, hood, SVG do documents are nothing more than simple plain text files that describe line, curves, shapes, colors, and text. And it can be like modifiable. Um, and because we can expose the code, as we can see here, then we can like use CSS or JavaScript uh, to change things. So why is it different from the GIF and the PNGs and uh, JPEGs? First, it's because it's scalable. Um, from You can scale the image without uh, uh, loss of quality or fidelity. And then the, another very good thing, it's the file size. So uh, if you have an SVG and if you want to scale up the image, the file size is going to be the same because it's actually the size of the document. And then it's the best thing about an SVG and comparing with the other images. Uh, it's modifiable. It means you can use CSS and you can use JavaScript to do awesome things. So, but how to use uh, these superpowers of the SVG because actually you can use as a background image or uh, uh, with the image tag but at the end, you want to use the best things of the SVG. So if you want to modify it and use it with CSS, you have to use it uh, in line. I mean to expose the code in the DOM. So the SVG with React, to use with React, you have two ways of doing it. Uh, actually, one of them, if you use something like SVGR or a Create React app, you can import the SVG as a React component. And the other way is you grab the SVG file and then you transform it into GSX. But why would you do this? Why you want to expose the SVG code? Um, I found two, um, two user cases. One of them is if you want to animate the SVG, and the other is if you want to make it like customizable. So import as React component uh, to do this. Um, Actually, you can use something, like I said, like uh, with Create React app is out of the box, or you can use um, a dependency like SVGR, and then you just have to say import React component as and the name that you want, and then it creates like the logo, uh, the component. So this is, uh, if you do this, you don't need to convert it into GSX, you don't have like uh, HTTP requests, and it's perfect if you want to do small things like CSS animations. Um, and at the end, it's really easy if you want to update the, the design because you just have to replace uh, this file and it's done. So if I go here to my code, I'm actually, it's a, I'm using the Create React app. It's running and 
So if I go here, and right now I'm importing an SVG and as an image, image source. So if I inspect this, if you notice, I can't do anything because it's just an image, right? So if I do this and I import as a React component, like this, Now I have the SVG in line, so I can have access to all these attributes, properties, and everything. So if I do something like this, real red, I can actually change with CSS uh, uh, colors and uh, everything. So, but the bad thing about about this uh, way of importing a component is that. If you want to create like an animation or to pass like React props and everything will be difficult because you have it, you have like the, the SVG in line, but actually you don't see everything here. So you can't use props and uh, events and all of this. So let's continue. So the second way, and I think this is the best way if you want to create animation, is to transform the SVG into GSX. And um, you won't have HTTP requests because the code will be in line. It's perfect if you want to split the SVG into different files. And you can make use of prop, state, and event handlers. But then at the end, because you start changing a lot to SVG itself, then if you want to update the design, it will be really difficult. So I'm going to show how to use uh, this way of transforming a SVG into GSX to create a component. And I'm going to use Sketch. To, for, um, I already have the design, a React, and Framer Motion for the animation. So this is actually the design. It's not the real cat, but let's say that it's like a human inside the custom cat. And uh, the idea is like it's going to be customizable and uh, custom, and OK. Uh, I try to be funny, but not sure if it worked. So as you can see, when I'm doing like this design, um, one thing that I do is like I have my primary color. And then if I inspect like the tail, I have another tail on top of it. And this one, I will have like a, a dark shade on top of it with some opacity. And the reason to do this is because at the end, I want something like, let's say that my component is going to be called cat. And I, I want something like color red. So I don't want to have like three colors. And actually now I have one color for the arms, one color is for the legs, and other, uh, the arms and legs are, have the same color and the tail is a little bit darker. So if I had to specify three colors, I would have to have like three props, like uh, color one, color two, color three. So what I do is I have this shade on top. So it means if I update the primary color, let's say to orange, everything's changed and the arm gets a little bit darker because I have that opacity on top. So let's go back to the same color. Okay, so the next thing that I do is uh, I have the cat here and I'm going to export as an SVG. And I created this folder called uh, SVGR. So it's already exported. So So if I go to my folder SVGR, I have the, the SVG that I exported. And as you can see, it has a lot of things, like a lot of the path definitions are too big. I have these things like title, description, saying created with sketch, and a lot of things that I don't actually need. So the next step is I need to optimize the image, because right now this file is too big and has a lot of things. 
So to optimize the image, what am I going to do is I have a dependency that I already run, uh, I already installed called SVGR uh, CLI. And the SVGR CLI actually uh, with it, I can like optimize the image and I can convert the SVG into a React component. So I created like a scripts uh, called SVG to GSX. And what I'm going to do is I have this image, the one that I show you, the cat SVG, and I want to convert the image into a component and I'm going to put inside the source component and the component we call cat.js. And then I will run with the svgo config. The svgo it's like to create the optimization. So this is my svgo config file, uh, this one. And I can show you. And what I'm doing here is by, de by default, the svgo uh, will uh, remove the view box and will clean all my IDs. And I don't want that. So I say, no, I, I want to keep the, remo the view box and I want to keep all my IDs. Uh, and then also I want to replace this caller, the primary caller, 858. I want to replace with props caller. So now I can run my script. And it's done in one second. It created like the component catches. So let's see if it replaced this color. So as you can see, uh, the fill um, it's now replaced with props color. And also, if I go to the real image, we can see that the path is too big, and now it's much smaller. And I have all my IDs prefix uh, tail. The prefix actually with SVGR, you can give your own prefix. I, I didn't do it, but you can call wherever you want. So this is now uh, the final component um, from SVGR. And now I can see if it's actually working. Is the thing a function? <laughs> okay. Okay. So as you can see, actually, let's change it. As you can see, it doesn't have a color, right? And the reason why is because I have the I I changed the primary color to props a color, and now I don't have a default color, so I need to give like a, a default uh, color. So let's import the prop types. So now, as you can see, by default, if I call the component and if I don't specify any color, um, it's going by default to have this color. So now if I say color and salmon, it's going to update. So now let's, the other thing that I want to do, as you can see, the, the image is too small. So I wanted to have the same, like to, specify a size as a prop and I can say uh, I want to, um, to have about 400 uh, width or height and actually have an, uh, 
a bigger size of the image. So to do that, we're going to do like this, drop size. So if I inspect, we can see that it has like this space and it shouldn't have. And the reason why is the aspect uh, ratio is not okay because actually it's not a real square. So I can have like 500 and 500 because this is the real aspect ratio. So the, the height is 320 and the width is 270. So to find the actual um, aspect ratio, I'm going to divide the width by the height and I know already that it's going to be a 0 0.84. So now if I inspect, you can see I don't have that space anymore. And the image is going to grow a scale in, uh, with the right aspect ratio. So if I say size. Okay, now what we can do, we can start animating the image. And for that, I'm going to use a uh, framer motion. This is like a uh, uh, framer motion and uh, I found it like really easy to use. When I started preparing this talk, I was almost using pose and framer motion is like the next step of uh, pose. And actually I was thinking if it was a good idea because I learned like two or three days ago. So, <laughs> But I found it really easy. So to use it is just like this motion, um, frame motion. And the way that uh, it works is you have like um, these components, motion.t. So it means that you can grab any SVG or HTML element. If you want to use a div, it will be motion.div and then you can great animation. If you want to use an SVG element like a group, uh, it will be motion.g. So the first thing that I want to animate is um, the eyes. I want to make the, this human cat to blink. So to do this, I'm going to search for eyes. And that's the reason that I like to uh, leave the IDs because without the IDs, you can see I have another similar um, elements and then will be really difficult to find um, in the file. So actually I could change uh, this group to motion.g but actually I'm going to create a new element in here. Okay. So I'm going to wrap the eyes with this framer uh, component and to create animation is just animate and it perceives like an object. And in this case, what I want to animate is the eyes. So I want to, um, I'm going to use this uh, scale Y that is a uh, scale uh, Y that is like the Y axis. So it goes from one to a smaller size. So scale Y and uh, it perceives array and I'm going from 1 to 0 0.1 to 1. It blinked once. Cool. But I don't actually want it to blink just once. I want it to blink uh, more times. So I'm going to call this GSX attribute and uh, say the duration. I'm sorry. So transition and I want it to blink like in 0 0.25 seconds and to look 
this is already a variable from the machine. Now it's blinking, but I think it's blinking a lot. So what we can do is like have like a, a delay. So I'm going to call it a repeat delay um, per second. So it means that we stop per second and then it will start the loop. And now it seems more realistic. And actually you can do the same for the mouse. And because I'm lazy, I'm going to copy this. Um, okay, the mouse is here. But it's not cool because no one blinks and close the mouth at the same time, I think. So I'm going to change a little, maybe the duration will be a little bit more, um, and the delay also a little bit more. So let's see. Okay, it's much better, I think. So other thing that I can do is actually animate the tail. So the idea is I want the tail like attached to, to the tape a little bit. So I'm going to um, search for tail and it's here. So I'm going to wrap into a um, motion component, also a group. case I want to animate the, um, this part of the tape and it will seem also on a way and uh, I want to rotate from 0 to uh, 20 degrees because I don't want to go too low so just a little bit 20 and then it go back to 0 so it does this and then it go back to 0 okay it rotates once and now the same transition Actually, one of the problems here, first it's, I think it's a little bit fast, so let's change the duration to two seconds. Okay, so one of the problems here is the, uh, the point of the origin X and Y, it's in the middle. So right now it's rotating here, so by default this is the origin X and Y. And what I wanted is to rotate here. I decided that this is the point that I wanted to happen. So to find this point um, in the y axis, um, it starts from zero on top and goes until the, the size of the image. And as we can see, the tail, it has 141 of height. And uh, the width is zero from 126. So to find this point, Actually, I have this pair. I'm going to remove from 141 uh, uh, 13 pixels. So I'm, I have to style it. Um, and say that the origin uh, Y is going to be 121 of the pixels. And from 0 to here is 12. So the X will be 12. Um, okay, it's much better. But now we have another problem. And the problem is the image itself just has this size. So what I'm going to do, so I think this is like a bad design. Actually, I could make the tail smaller but to fix this I can actually move the tail a little bit to the to the left so I can use the translate 
x and times square to pixel yeah okay so this is the final uh, cat but now maybe I can improve just a little bit more uh, if you see like the tail is moving in not so natural so we can actually have put like a heat and uh, and I can use this ease in and out it's like it's going to smooth uh, when it's getting in and out so I think it's a little bit better so this is the final cut you can do much more with the uh, frame of motion uh, there's much more you can drag or uh, do much more things and uh, actually I'm just going to change it so it's like fully customizable you can change the size you can change the color um, it has some this small animation and uh, and this is basically my uh, presentation uh, I hope you uh, keep using SVG with React and let's all make the web fun again and uh, for that just uh, build a lot of things actually I have some projects uh, if you go to my uh, github just search for uh, milky new and um, and you can see I have like uh, some project one with SVGs called React Hawaii I have a cassette tape uh, where you can do your own hip hop freestyle uh, and that's it thank you